What's going on YouTube? How is everybody today? It's wonderful to hear. Uh, so today's Saturday. We're going to talk about an album I bring out with me to DJ on Saturdays. Uh, I play, sometimes I play hip hop on Saturdays. My boss really doesn't like it because he says it's going to attract gang people. People in gangs will hear that I'm playing hip hop and of course come there. Uh, but an album that I love to play is of course uh, Old Dirty Bastards uh, debut solo album. Uh, Return to the 36 Chambers, the Dirty Version, uh, released in 1995 on Elektra Records. Uh, old Dirty Bastard, he was born in 1968, died in 2004 of an accidental drug overdose. He died in the record studio, Wu-Tang Studios. Uh, he got his name from a 1980s uh, kung fu movie, uh, Old Dirty and the Bastard. Uh, he's also called Old Dirty Bastard because there's no father to his style. Uh, Old Dirty Bastard is probably one of my favorite people of all time, one of my favorite characters ever. He's really over the top, he's fucking insane in the brain. Uh, he was the second uh, Wu-Tang member to get a solo album too. Method Man was the only guy who beat him to the punch, but this album is fucking crazy. He's a crazy guy. Uh, Classic album, classic Wu-Tang album, like classic hip-hop album. Is nominated for a Grammy in 1996. Uh, Russell Tyrone Jones, he's a crazy guy. He had a... Uh, it was rumored that he had mental illness. And nothing on this record will help, you know, dispel that, that's for sure. It's a fucking crazy guy. Uh, but yeah, he's got a very unique delivery. He's got a very kind of delirious, half-crazed, half-sung, half-rapped kind of borderline incoherent kind of flow, just raps about all kinds of insane shit, about period blood and poverty, and welfare checks, you know, Shaolin movies, just making shit up sometimes, busting people in the face, killing people, raps about oral sex a lot and his balls constantly. Uh, like I said, he was born in 1968 in Brooklyn, and I just learned today that he's actually cousins with Jizza and the RZA, and they grew up watching kung fu movies and listening to hip hop and shit, and that's how you got started doing all that but yeah Dirt McGirt very good album I really really like this album it's very it's all over the map it's pretty crazy it's got funny skits like it's pretty much just like hardcore rap gangster rap mixed with like hilarity lots of comedy on here I don't know if it's intentional but he has a very such an over top personality and just the shit that comes out of his mouth is just so bizarre and outrageous it's like it's a lot of humor and absurdity I don't know, just the way he delivers, like his delivery is hilarious too. He's got this kind of slurred, crazed vocalization. It's very erratic, it's very vulgar, very profane, very chauvinistic. I don't know, but this album's banging. It's got all kinds of bangers on here. RZA handles most of the production as well as a guy called True Master and the Fourth Disciple. But it's mostly RZA doing his like murky kind of Wu-Tang beats, kind of sparse, kind of grimy production on here but yeah very big very vicious album very cool very like you know scary and hard I don't know I really liked this album it's got one of my favorite songs uh, shimmy shimmy ya yeah, and hip it to the hopper on here songs I like to play uh, yeah if you're not familiar with like old dirty bastards and you think uh, hip-hop sucks you totally get familiar with him he was he's got a very endearing personality though he's got a charm even if you don't like this album at first, he'll totally leave an impression on you. Something that'll play stay with you your whole life. It's fucking crazy. It's got a lot of raw energy, a lot of uh, imagination. It's got a lot of originality. He even has like a, a rendition of the song from Wizard of Oz, Somewhere Over the Rainbow on here. I don't know. He's been in jail a bunch of times too. I wrote down a little bit of his criminal history for y'all. So I guess... The first thing I could find was in 1993 where he was jailed for assault and then he was shot in 1994. Uh, 1997 he was arrested for failure to pay child support. He has 13 kids by the way, he's 13 kids. Uh, he was arrested in 1998 for shoplifting. Even though he had cash on him, he was still stealing like a pair of shoes. Uh, he was also shot again two days before that in like some sort of attempted mugging. Uh, he was arrested for a failure to appear in court. He was spent time as a fugitive, uh, uttering threats, criminal threatening, gun possession, drug possession, attempted murder, driving without a license, more drug possession, it was crack and weed, I think he had a crack problem, uh, and he's been a fugitive a lot more times, he even recorded some tracks at RZA's studio while on the lam with some warrants out for his arrest, he's a crazy guy. 13 kids, that's insane, but yeah, very good album, it's got guest appearances of course too by Jizza, Ghostface, uh, Method Man, Killer Priest, Buddha Monk, Rayquan, Prodigal Son. 
samples a lot of uh, old kung fu movies. Uh, if I had to compare old Dirty Bastard to anybody, it'd probably be like Bismarcky, mix of like Screaming Jay Hawkins, a little bit of Richard Fryer in there. I don't know, he's very uh, pretentious free, very entertaining kind of guy. Artworks, not much in the way of artwork on here, just his food stamp cards, is that what it is? Food coupons, sorry. It's got a little bit of his information on there. There's also a story how he took an MTV limousine with three of his 13 kids to the welfare office in a limousine to pick up his welfare check. <laughs> Fucking crazy. There he is sitting on some steps looking like a crazy ass. Very off the wall guy. It's cool. Poser free kind of hip hop though. I think ODB was the real deal, that's for sure. But yeah, classic hip hop album. Uh, it does have a few rough spots on it just because it's, you know, a pure ODB, so it's not going to be perfect. It's got quite a few imperfections on it, but it's a thoroughly enjoyable movie. Movie, album, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, very good. Suggest you check it out. It's totally worth your time. It's six, 17 songs, 68 minutes long. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. I lost track of my thoughts. All right, Old Dirty Bastard, Return to the 36 Chambers, the dirty version released in 1995, Electra Records. It's totally worth your time. It's hilarious. She responded quick with a slick, welcoming.